uh, I prepared this to show you just a, a few figures and get a more concrete uh, uh, understanding of, uh, of this uh, issue that we are discussing, which is uh, U.S. hegemony in global imperialism. Um, uh, so to go beyond, you know, general ideological type of discussions, let's have one which is at least informed by some concrete uh, facts, and then we can discuss uh, beyond that. So I, I will point to a few of them here and, uh, and introduce a discussion on this. Uh, since this will be my focus, I won't uh, uh, deal much, I mean, I will allude to rather briefly to, the, um, to, to Syria, for instance, the issue of Syria and all that, but uh, I guess this will come in the discussion because uh, Terry just uh, uh, evoked that. Okay, so now, when, you know, we've had uh, long, there are long, uh, there have been long uh, the history now of, uh, of debate on, uh, on uh, the U.S. decline. And so this is nothing really new as a theme of discussion. Uh, it was already very much here, uh, uh, actually, from the late 60s, when you had the, the crisis of the international monetary system uh, combined with the Vietnam War, which actually contributed to this crisis. Uh, and in the 70s, uh, the, the, the United States, after the defeat in Vietnam, uh, and the economic uh, uh, problems that it faced, uh, you know, went into what they called in the United States itself declinism, whole phase of that, which uh, carried on in the 80s uh, to the point that uh, one major base bestseller of the, the, the late 80s, actually, um, the, 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 the Paul Kennedy's book on the rise and fall of uh, of empires, uh, which was focused at, in its conclusion on the decline of the U.S. empire. I mean, that marked the spirit of the time, so that, uh, that tells you. Now, he, he got it completely wrong at that time, because he saw in the Reagan uh, uh, craze in military spending uh, uh, what he called an overstretch of the empire, which would lead to its uh, downfall or precipitate its uh, decline. And what happened? was uh, uh, the contrary, in a way. He didn't understand the role that the military budget plays in the uh, American economy as uh, the, the, the key tool through which uh, the, the, the US state injects funds in the, in, the, in the economy, in industry, in research and development and all that. And the, 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 the fact is that the, the Reagan years saw the longest uh, peacetime expansion in uh, American economic history, and that was followed with the longest expansion period under Clinton uh, uh, later on, and it was a massive comeback of the United States. And then now again, you have, we have a new wave of discussion about the decline, which is again connected with the, the global crisis, uh, the, uh, the, the Great Recession, as it has been called, the conjunction of that with the defeat in Iraq and the Middle East, to which I will be using. So you have a kind of a similar conjunction of factors leading to the same kind of a new wave of, of discussion about, uh, about decline. So let us first yeah, check a few uh, figures and compare the present crisis to that of the, the 70s and 80s uh, to, um, to know what we are uh, talking about. So first, if we look at the uh, defense, uh, defense spending. Uh, you can see that in, uh, in constant dollars, the United States uh, has been spending over uh, uh, the, 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 the last few years, I mean, this is the, the Bush years, uh, uh, more than at any previous time <coughs> in its history, uh, if you put aside the Second World War, of course, which is a, some, a completely different uh, category. So you've had a, a real peak in, in defense spending, but the key point is, uh, if you are discussing, for instance, the sustainability of something like this, is what does it represent compared to the GDP of the United States, the gross domestic product, that is the, the, the power of the American economy. 
And from that angle, you can see that uh, we are not in any, uh, I mean, we are uh, uh, in a rather low point of the uh, uh, GDP, uh, I mean, of the of defense spending compared to the GDP. And that shows you that, uh, the, I mean, the United States is far from exhausting its, uh, uh, even this, its capability of spending for its uh, uh, military. Now, of course, the, the defense, defense spending should be put in the broader picture of, uh, of the, 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 uh, the federal, federal budget and the U.S. economy in general. And uh, from that angle, indeed, uh, this is actually for the United States more alarming than military expenditure per se because you've had this huge uh, peak in the red. Uh, of, uh, of the federal deficit of the United States. Just to give you a, an example, because now it reached 10% uh, after, I mean, with the bailout uh, for the, the crisis, uh, the, the, the economic crisis in 2008. Uh, but, I mean, if you compare that to the Maastricht criteria, where the, the threshold is 3%, uh, we, can, we can see how, how, I mean, the United States would not be able to join the Eurozone. <laughs> uh, if ever it wished to do so. Uh, so that was indeed a, a, a big peak, and of course, they, they, I mean, this was exceptional, but nevertheless, this is a, oops, a quite uh, uh, important, uh, even at the level of 4% of, of GDP, this is a, a huge, a huge uh, uh, deficit, I mean, given what type of economy it is, but again, this is not something that is beyond sustainability for the United States, especially if we look of what it is composed of. And you can see here, I mean, this is the exceptional here in blue, the recovery measures and all that due to the crisis. So this is temporary, not something uh, structural and, uh, and, and uh, permanent. Uh, what is, uh, uh, and here you have in light yellow, you have the colors there, yeah. The, the wars, so the military is, is a part of this deficit, but it's not that big. The biggest thing is actually neoliberalism, in a sense, that is the Bush-era uh, tax cuts. And when, if you cut taxes, you can reinstate taxes. So, I mean, again, this shows you that the United States have, is not anywhere near exhausting uh, its, uh, its, uh, its resources. So we have to keep all these issues uh, uh, in mind. Uh, uh, so, indeed, we have the, the, the worst federal debt since uh, the Second World War, and that uh, was reached uh, because of the accumulation of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, yearly uh, uh, deficit. We were speaking of the deficit, now it's the debt. Uh, and here again, if you look at the uh, Maastricht criteria, which put the, the, the thresholds at, uh, I mean, the limit at 60%, the United States is, uh, is far, far beyond that, uh, but, uh, and well, this is another way of, of, of showing that. So the national debt of the United States has been increasing steadily, and it's, it's uh, just enormous. It's $17 trillion uh, that is uh, one full year of American GDP, uh, that is $17,000 billion. That's a, you know, absolutely crazy kind of figure. Uh, and the, the, the issue here is, is this a, I mean, this is a sign of, of weakness in the sense that such a huge debt is, is never uh, uh, positive, but it's also a sign of strength because no other state on earth could afford anything, anything comparable to this kind uh, of, uh, of, of debt. And that's because of the centrality of the U.S state and economy in the global system, that something like this uh, is possible. And this is, I mean, where, where does the, the money come to the, 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 uh, the uh, I mean, where, to whom does the United States owe money here? We can see that I mean, the majority are, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, US domestic uh, uh, creditors, and you have also some important uh, uh, foreign creditors uh, here. You can find, you can see, um, where is it here? Uh, this is uh, uh, Japan, this is China, 
um, well, all other foreign nations. So this, these are the, the foreign, the foreign creditors here of of the United States. Uh, now, <clears throat> that means that the United States owes money to these countries, and especially China and uh, and uh, and Japan. Where is the thing? If you look at, at it here, who are uh, among the main funders of of the U.S. Uh, treasury here. Of course, these are the foreign holders. There are others, as I showed you, domestic holders. But among the foreign holders, uh, uh, China and Japan are very uh, important. Now, uh, this would be interpreted superficially by saying, ah, the United States depends on China and Japan. Uh, if you look at it in a different way, uh, you, uh, what uh, I would call the, the, the paradox of the big debtor. Uh, it's well known, that is, if you are a small debtor, your bank controls you. If you are a big debtor, you control your bank. And that's very well known in, in economy, in bank business, and all that. And that means that, actually, the fact that these countries uh, have so much uh, uh, invested in treasury securities means that they are actually dependent on the U.S. economy, and for instance, they have absolutely no interest in trying to wreck the U.S. economy because they would wreck themselves. In the same way that a, debt would ne a, big, a bank would never try to wreck its big debtor because that would wreck, wreck it, uh, itself. So this also shows, I mean, and points to the importance of the U.S. economy. Now, the trade, the trade, of course, is, uh, I mean, the trade deficit. <coughs> which has been uh, uh, very uh, important and is still very, very important, so increasingly important, is something that, uh, uh, I mean, it's a structural weakness has been now for, for, for a few decades of, uh, of, of the U.S. economy. Uh, and here, I mean, I'll get to that. Uh, but at, at the same time, this trade deficit is what allows the system, the global system, to work because the, the deficit of the United States is the surplus of countries like Japan, Germany, uh, or uh, or China, if you want. so the United States economy has been playing the role of a buyer and last resort, if you want, in the global economy, and this makes it the indispensable nation, as Madeleine Albright uh, put it uh, some years ago. So uh, I mean, again, you have these ambiguities. That is, you can point to these figures, some of them, as Weaknesses, but at the same time, there are weaknesses revealing the strength of the system. So this is, if you want, a very dialectical here situation, and it's not at all the simplistic view of the United States being, you know, some kind of uh, wrecked economy depending on uh, on the rest of the world. Um, okay, actually, if you look at the 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 uh, importance of China uh, in the trade deficit of the United States. This is a, a good illustration of what uh, we're saying. That is, the United States uh, imports a lot uh, from China. But in this relation, uh, it's obvious that it's much more, it's China which depends on the US market much more than the United States depending on, on Chinese production. Uh, all the more if you take into account the fact that a lot of what is produced in China is produced by US companies, US firms. Uh, uh, outsourcing and, uh, I mean, working uh, in, uh, in China. So, <clears throat> uh, this is an indication of importance of the U.S. market for, uh, for, for, for China. You can see, I mean, this was in 2006. Uh, at that time, the, the uh, U.S. market, I mean, the exports of China to the United States were almost 10% of the uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, GDP. Uh, that is the equivalent of 10% of the Chinese GDP, where uh, this was the, 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 the importance of the U.S. market for, uh, for China. And uh, uh, one, one uh, U.S. company alone, Walmart, uh, uh, imported, I mean, for the equivalent of 1% of the Chinese GDP. This is, again, absolutely, uh, absolutely huge. So we have to keep uh, these relations uh, in, uh, in mind and not look at it one-sidedly, as some do, and, uh, and get into what I would call a very superficial, impressionistic uh, conclusions about all that. 
Now, of course, by, by the sheer size of what it is, China with this absolutely huge population, uh, several times that of the United States, uh, is poised to uh, become the, 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 the first economy uh, from, by the, the size in, in, in the absolute figures. That is, the size of the Chinese GDP uh, is, is supposed to become, uh, to make it the, the largest uh, on earth. But, uh, I mean, this would, of course, make of China, uh, I mean, China is already a huge uh, economic uh, powerhouse, and this uh, will increase as long as uh, the Chinese economy keeps, uh, keeps going. Um, uh, however, uh, this is, uh, I mean, not in itself doesn't mean that China, for instance, because its GDP will become the largest on Earth, will be the most important economic uh, force or, or whatever on Earth. There is no uh, here equivalence because we have to look at, uh, uh, I mean, uh, to, to relativize this GDP by the population. And, uh, and even if you look, I mean, of course, the GDP per capita in, of China is much lower than that, uh, incomparably lower than that of the United States. And you can take something like this, also showing you the, the, the difference in the, in the richness, if you want, and even the technological performances of, of these countries. You look at the motor vehicle density, and you see uh, how uh, China here is very, very, very far from, from the United States or countries uh, like even the, the UK and all that, if you take the, the number of passenger cars here, for instance, per 1,000 people, which also tells you that if China had the same rate that the United States, the, the sky would be, would be a different color now. And that, that's a very strong ecological uh, argument uh, because that shows how unsustainable the level of uh, consumption that we have here in Western countries, uh, at least uh, without any technological, uh, ecological change, is. is. Okay, so, uh, and finally, of course, the United, the China, uh, although it has been uh, um, increasing its military budget by double digits over the last few years, and even if we put aside the, 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 the recent cut in the Chinese armed forces announced at, uh, recently by the Chinese uh, president for, for, for the first time. Uh, but even if you, you forget this, there is a far cry you know, from between what China represents militarily and what the United States represents militarily, all the more that, again, uh, these figures has to be taken also in, in the context of a very large army much larger than that of, of the United States, which means that a lot of this budget is salaries to soldiers, and in modern wars, soldiers are not that uh, crucial. Uh, it's much more the technology, and the Chinese military technology is, is very much uh, second rate. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, China uh, depends on Russia for its uh, uh, sophisticated, uh, whatever kind of sophisticated weaponry it has, and it is, it is very low. They just, uh, for instance, bought uh, um, an air, aircraft carrier, but it's a recycled, very old Russian one. Uh, so that just tell you, tells you that there's no here uh, point. So uh, all this sh shows us that the you United know, States remains and is poised to remain for quite a long time uh, the most important power on Earth. And therefore, uh, uh, from that point of view, from the point of view of, of its economic importance and its military, and they are connected uh, very much, uh, uh, it, it, it's not any time soon that we'll see the United States, uh, you know, uh, be becoming uh, or, or moving to the, the, the second rank or, uh, or, or, or whatever. Now, where's the weak point, the Achilles heel in the United States? It's not yet the economic power in the sense that even, I mean, if you have a big problem, if the crisis, for instance, uh, uh, rebounds in the United States, this is not a crisis affecting the United States alone. It will affect everybody, including China. So in that sense, it's not a weakness. It's as weak. if, it, if there are weaknesses, there are weaknesses of the system, not of, uh, of uh, the United States alone. It can't go down alone without taking with it the whole system. 
everybody. Uh, um, so it's not there, it's not militarily because they have quite, uh, I mean, militarily in terms of firepower, in, of destructive power, they are, they will be, they will remain uh, dominant for, for, for a very long time. Their Achilles heel is the, uh, uh, actually, the, what they used to call, although they don't use this term any longer, but it's still very much there, the Vietnam syndrome, if you want. That is this <coughs> inability of the United States to, uh, uh, to reestablish the draft and uh, to uh, uh, deploy uh, the, the, the same kind of uh, numbers that it, it deployed at the peak of, uh, of the Vietnam War. And this is the reason why it can't control uh, states. I mean, the, the reluctance of the US public to uh, military adventures, to wars, which for a while under the impact of 9-11 receded, came back with a vengeance, one could say, with the, the, the disaster in Iraq. And it's still there. And this is the weakest aspect of the United States, this inability to, uh, to uh, send uh, troops to occupy for long and, and to get in wars anything resembling even uh, a pale copy of, uh, of the Vietnam War. And that's the, the key, the reason of the failure in Iraq. The defeat in Iraq uh, was due to that. They went into Iraq in the belief that uh, they could control that country with uh, limited troops and that their soft power combined with their hard power will do miracles. They faced a total defeat. Iraq is uh, uh, the, the most, actually one I mean, can argue, uh, it's arguably the, the, the most important disaster in, the, uh, in US imperial history. Uh, uh, more important than Vietnam because of what is at stake, because of the much more important strategic uh, role of the region in which Iraq is, and of Iraq itself also as a country, uh, major holders of, uh, of uh, oil, uh, oil reserves. So that's here the, the, the Achilles heel, and uh, that, I mean, sh I mean if, if there is a real decline of the United States, it's, it's in this respect. There is a decline. I mean, the United States hegemony is in decline in the Middle East in a very clear way. It's not because of the economy. It's not because of the military budget. It's because of the inability to project uh, troops, which, is, which boils down to a political inability, uh, which boils down also to the, 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 the fact that the United States remains, of course, a country where you have an electoral democracy and therefore where the government can't do anything that uh, pleases them. And I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you.